Hi everyone and welcome to this video where I'm going to walk you through how to manually update the firmware on your passport. The easiest way to update the firmware on your passport device is via Envoy, our mobile companion app. If you're an Envoy user, check out our tutorial walking you through exactly how to do that. The following steps are for non-Envoy users that want to ensure that their passport is kept up to date. Updating the firmware on your passport is an important step to ensure that you benefit from the latest features, user interface updates and security related improvements. I'm going to split this video into two sections. The first will cover how to download the firmware from an official source and perform an integrity check on the file using Passport before installing the firmware onto the device. The second part of the video will show how more advanced users can perform file integrity and signature checks using their computer. These steps are the best way to ensure not only the integrity of the file being downloaded, but also that the file comes from the expected source, the foundation development team. Let's get started. So outside of the Envoy app, there are two official places from which you can download your passport firmware files. The first one being our documentation website, which can be located at docs.foundationdevices.com. Or the other option is our official GitHub page, which can be found at github.com slash foundation dash devices. If downloading from GitHub, just need to select the relevant latest release, scroll down to the assets section and look for the file name ending passport.bin. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to download our firmware from the documentation website. So on the documentation website, we just need to click firmware updates from the left side menu, which will take us to the firmware update page. And there should be two direct download links towards the top of the page. The first one being for our founders edition firmware and the second one being for our batch two or the latest passport device. So I'm just going to click on that and that will automatically download the file down to my computer. As you can see there, version 2.0.4 has been downloaded. So the next step is to copy that firmware file over to a micro SD card that I've already got inserted into my computer. So I'm going to navigate to my downloads folder. We can see the passport firmware there and I'm just going to drag and drop that over onto my SD card. Double check that it made it there, which it did. And I can then eject that from my computer. With the SD card inserted into the top of passport, I could scroll across to the left to get to the settings menu. Then I can scroll down to advanced, choose micro SD, list files, and we can see that our firmware file is listed there. If I press continue on that, Passport will calculate the SHA-256 one-way hash function over this file and will output a final hash. So Passport is now showing the SHA-256 digest which is a string of letters and numbers unique to every single byte combination inside that firmware file. And what we can do is navigate over to the GitHub page, scroll down to the release hashes, and we can compare the output on Passport with the published hash from the foundation developer team. So as we can see there, it ends in D62EE4, which is exactly what Passport is showing us on screen. So we can be sure that the firmware file has not been changed in the brief time that it was downloaded to our computer and then passed to the SD card. The next step on Passport is to go back out to the main settings menu, up to firmware. Then I'm going to choose update firmware. Select the file that's just been downloaded and choose continue. Passport will finally ask if we are ready to install the firmware update and then it'll go ahead and apply the update. Once the update has been applied, Passport will reboot and you'll be asked to apply your PIN again to log back into the device. Firmware update complete. Okay, so next up we're going to look at the more advanced uh, verification steps that you can take uh, using your computer. The first method I'm going to show you is using the command line and the second set of steps that I'm going to show you is using a cross-platform application called Cleopatra, which has a graphical user interface. So we've already downloaded the firmware. There's no change in the steps taken there. Uh, the next step that we need to do is we need to download what's called a signature file, which can be found on the GitHub releases page. You're just looking for the .sig file. So I'm going to click on that and download it. 
And the final thing that we need to download is the key used to sign that signature file so that we can successfully verify it. So there's two places that you can find this key and import to your computer. The first one is at foundationdevices.com slash PGP. And the f it'll be the first key that you see there belonging to Ken Carpenter, our lead developer. And just to be clear, we're looking for the key ID that ends in 8A68. The other place that you can download it from is the firmware update page on our documentation website. If you scroll down and look for foundation underscore key dot PGP. So I'm going to click on that to download it. Okay, so we have everything that we need. So the next step is for me to open up my downloads folder in the terminal. So I'm going to navigate to downloads, right click, open in terminal. So the first step is the SHA-256 hash check again. So what I'm going to do is type SHA-256sum, add a space, and then I need to type the name of the firmware file that we downloaded, which will start with V2.0. And if I press the tab button, it should automatically fill that out for me. And then when I press enter, my computer will perform the SHA-256 hash function. And we can then compare that with the website we were on earlier. So we have ending in 62EE4. So if we go to GitHub, we've got 62EE4. So we've got a perfect SHA-256 hash match again, which is great. So the next step is for us to import the key file that was used to sign this firmware file. So we've already downloaded it. The next step is that we need to import it to our keychain on our computer. So to do that using Linux, we're going to choose gpg dash dash import space. And then we're going to type the name of the key, which was foundation underscore key dot PGP. Of course, if you download this from uh, our PGP website and you save it as a file yourself, you'll just need to type the name of the file that you named it. And then I'm going to choose enter. And as we can see there, uh, our key manager has imported the key belonging to Ken Carpenter and we've got a success message. So we've got the key imported to our computer now and we are ready to verify the signature file that we also downloaded. So to do that, what we need to do is type gpg dash dash verify space and then we need to choose the signature file which starts the same as the firmware file does. which is v2.0.4 dash passport dot bin dot sig. Of course, your firmware file version may be different to this one, but the same syntax applies. You just need to change the numbers. Once we've done that, I'm going to press enter and we can see we have a good signature message, which confirms that it was Ken Carpenter that signed our signature file that was published alongside the firmware file that we've already downloaded. And we can also confirm the fingerprint there, ending in 8868. So now that we've completed all of those steps and we've verified the integrity of the file using the SHA-256 function, and we've also verified that the signature is valid from a key that is published by the foundation developer team, you can follow the steps that I've previously shown. We can copy that file over to the microSD card and then take the same steps on Passport to apply that to the device. So if all of those command line steps looked a little bit scary for you, there is an alternative option in which you can verify the signatures of the downloaded firmware and signature files. And the name of that software is Cleopatra. It's available on Linux operating systems and also can be downloaded for Windows at the URL shown on screen. So once you've got Cleopatra downloaded and installed to your computer, the first step is to import the key. So to do that, we're gonna to go to import, navigate to our downloads folder, and then choose the key that we downloaded earlier. We then see a successful message and we can see the Ken Carpenter key has been imported and we can verify that the fingerprint matches the one displayed and it, if we remember, it ends in 8A68. So we've imported the key. The next step is to verify the signature file. So to do that, I'm gonna choose decrypt slash verify Navigate to our downloads folder and choose the .sig file. 
Then we need to choose the file that was signed, which of course is the passport firmware file, the one ending .bin. So I'm gonna double click on that. And then we have a successful signature verification message. If at this stage you do get any errors, you may need to right click on Ken's key and click certify. And this is an extra step sometimes required by Cleopatra to double check that you have indeed verified that the key belongs to the intended owner. So now that we've got the successful verification within Cleopatra, we can go ahead and follow the steps outlined earlier on Passport. So we just need to insert the micro SD card into the top of the device and then follow the firmware update steps.